Hey guys, so welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let's carry on where we left off. We are collecting blood samples as though we were Dexter Morgan. Although they are not trophies, mind you. Otherwise, we'd be known as Ryanosuke the Ripper, given the time period. But for our portfolio, so we can compare blood samples. Uh, we've already identified two of them. One belongs to Mr. Windebank in the storeroom back there. But the other belongs to Thrice-Fired Mason. Uh, which we hesitantly guessed at the end of the last episode because we couldn't believe it ourselves. It's on one of the redemption tickets. Uh, so we need to follow up on that. We also need to follow up on the fact that Susato knows the name of the manuscript, The Hound of the Baskervilles, which was supposedly top secret, hidden from the world by Mr. Sholmes. So we need to understand why she knows about it. I believe it has something to do with what Kazuma said earlier, how he basically had to come to... England to, to take care of something. We never knew what it was. He died before he could let us know. I doubt it's just to set up his own legal firm. Uh, Susato might have a clue about it. That's the only thing I could think of. Especially because, you know, we knew Iris's father. Dr. Dr. John Wilson. He was um, visiting the medical side of the university that we that we studied at, which is where Susato's father uh, is situated based on what i recollect anyway <laughs> let's gather some more evidence for the potential last leg of this investigation right according to iris it says that we might have missed what someone said in the storeroom i remember inspector gregson was hanging out in here so perhaps we need to converse with him no perhaps we need to present something to him what could we show i know this is supposed to be top secret but let's present the manuscript to him any, uh, <laughs> any comments? Is, is that what I think it is? Y your ladyship's latest. Uh, I wouldn't say latest. Yes, my latest story. It's called The Hound of the Baskervilles. A uh, uh, most fascinating title, your ladyship. Fascinating. And, um, I don't suppose... Would there be any mention of my humble self in the tale this time? <laughs> Gregsy, you cutesy. Mm, good question. I can't really remember. I see, I see. That's fine. That's fine. Well, why would you, your ladyship? <laughs> I'll just await its publication with eager anticipation. I mean, it's probably a good thing you're not mentioned, Gregson. Like, if you're mentioned all the time, that just runs the risk that eventually you'll be painted in a negative light. You needn't worry, Inspector. I'm sure if you do appear, you won't be doing anything particularly remarkable. <laughs> God! Why do we have to murder the man like this, Rinosuke? Jeez, I just said that you weren't the Ripper. You're looking to be arrested, Sunshine. I didn't mean it like that. And even if I did, you wouldn't have bitten her ladyship's head off, would you? <laughs> what did you mean it like, Rinosuke? Well, let's give uh, this one a try. The pawnbroker's ticket for the box. Um, Inspector, what do you make of this? Ah, what are we here, then? The redemption ticket for an article deposited here, is it? Looks like someone read out of office stationery and wrote the ticket on whatever paper was to hand. It's not even a paper, it's a photograph, right, of a cat. Yes, this is the ticket for Mr. McGilda's overcoat. The one that little diver turned up with yesterday. Oh, actually, no, it's, it's not. It's for a box. Really? Think you know better than me, do you? No, I I, I didn't mean to... Um, it's written right here, just just have a read. Very <laughs> nice right, Gregsy. It isn't the same ticket. Of course it isn't, of course it is. I, I never doubted you, your ladyship. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be an editor to this story, okay? And if you fuck with me, I'm gonna make sure you look like an imbecile. So, what's this all about then, if I might be so bold as to ask? This is a second ticket. A second one? It seems that Mr. McGilden, in fact, had another article in storage here at Windebacks. Hmm. Is that right? I think we need to discuss this further with the inspector, Mr. Narode. Oh, good. Because he's ever so easy to talk to. <laughs> well, he calls me Sunshine. That's a good thing, right? Oh, there we are. Our unlocked hidden dialogue. Here we go. The second redemption ticket. This ticket was in for is in one of the pockets of Mr. McGilded's overcoat. Huh? You, you mean to tell me? Yes, there was more than just the music box disc, it seems. Which we totally didn't make a copy of, by the way. Hmm. <laughs> Should have insisted on the lads taking it back to the yard and examining it properly. But according to the details on this ticket, Mr. Begilda deposited another article here with Mr. Windebank. Yes, I can see it written here. A small box, was it? Do you have any idea where it is, Gregsy? Any at all? It 
It's another article belonging to Mr. McGilded. Could be an important clue. All right, so as far as we're aware, it was dated the 13th of April, the expiry date. So uh, it, it's potentially already been bought by someone else, right? Because it was supposed to be forfeited, it's supposed to be out in front of the shop. Well, um, yes, uh, <laughs> I, I suppose it could be. What's with the hesitation there, Gregsy? Please stop looking at me with those big turquoise eyes, all full of hope and expectation. It's too much pressure. I'll lose me marbles, I will. I'll go barking. All right, okay, you're, you're going waffling right now. This is no time for dog impressions, Inspector. <laughs> Please stop nibbling on the fries. That's enough sauce from you, sunshine. Okay. Please don't bite my head off. There is one thing that springs to mind. According to this ticket, the redemption deadline's already passed, hasn't it? Oh yes, of course. Articles are only held for two months. So the small box will no longer be in here then. That's right. It's been forfeited. Which means it could be on the shelves in the front of the shop, where the forfeited items are offered for sale. Yes, the shelves in the front. We must search them at once. You're wasting your time. Eh? There are dozens of little boxes out there. Hundreds, even. Can't possibly know which one might have been the McGilded's. That information's not written on the ledger. Well, surely there might be a clue. Maybe there's a big MG on front of it. Or a McG. <laughs> Ugh. Well, I think we should at least have a look, just in case. Of course, your ladyship, of course. The very sensible of you, I'm sure. This is getting old. <laughs> Much like you, Gregson. Oh my god, what's going on in here? Oh dear. Ah! I nearly jumped out of my skin there. How could Mr. Windebank set such a wicked trap? It's a, a trap? I, I doubt he set out to scare anyone. Was that some sort of alarm? Is that really the time? I think perhaps we should pay Gina another visit soon. Oh? Her trial is tomorrow. We must establish whether or not you'll be defending her. I've got her defense papers. I suppose she hasn't signed them, right? I think we should ask her one more time. She may have changed her mind. Okay, we've got that intense music playing. I love this. I'm loving the soundtrack of this game. Can I, did I say that already? Like, honestly. Don't you remember, Rune? You told her she could rip up the representation papers if she didn't want you to be her lawyer. How could I forget? Really? Did I say that? <laughs> yes? You did. Okay, all right, don't go cross-eyed on me now. Just crossing your arms. The deadline for submitting the paperwork is fast approaching. In that case, we'd better hurry back to the prison and talk to Gina again. Okay, I don't suppose we're gonna find out what the small box is. I wonder if it's already in here, you know? Yes, this is where all the items that have been forfeited by their original owners are offered for sale. That's right, they've all got little price labels on them, but there's so many. I wonder if the small box this ticket was for is still on the shelf somewhere. The box that McGilda deposited here just over two months ago. Even if it were, finding it promises to be very troublesome indeed. There are so many boxes. It could be any one of them. Mr. Shom said that a pawnbroker's was the safest place to store anything. More secure than a bank's vault. So perhaps the small box of Mr. McGilda's contains something of gr very great value. That makes sense to me. Well, if that's the case, he'd probably have kept it locked. So then we need to find every box with a lock and break them all open! Hey, yeah! Whoa, no, don't Susato take me down in this freaking shop! I could have broken something! You know how much money we've got left in the budget? I'm not paying for anything! That sort of misconduct will get you arrested! I won't let that happen! Uh, this takes me back. Oh, then sometimes it's Susato Sat lost through me. God, weren't you the one talking about stealing stuff yesterday? Goodness me. Talk about a bad influence. Alright, where's the prison? There it is. I'll have to hobble my way to the carriage. 16th of April, 5.41pm. Local prison. Cell 13. Ah, oh, Gina. Good. You're back. Huh? Oh, don't give me that face. You're gonna be in tears by the by the time this case is over. I, I can see it now. In the defendant's lobby after the victory music's played, the confetti's fallen, you're gonna be looking at me with puppy dog eyes going, oh my god, thank you, Rinosuke Narihode. <laughs> I swear. The police must have finished questioning her then. Hey, how was it, Ginny? Was it awful? 
Uh, oh, didn't bother me. Thank you for the papers you signed before. It meant we were able to investigate at Windebanks. Oh, right. <laughs> Come on. Don't you want to know how we got on? We've been ever so busy. What's the point in asking? It won't change what everyone's saying. That I did it. That's not... Well, did you? Gina, we came to ask for your final decision. Eh? What decision? About tomorrow's trial. Will you let me defend you or not? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you know. He's <laughs> shy, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I must submit the paperwork now if you'd like Mr. Narahoda to represent you. Right, I see. There is literally nothing to lose, okay? Like, if everyone's saying you did it, you're screwed. But there's a small chance I'll be able to save you, okay? Isn't a small chance better than no chance? She's really lost her fight all of a sudden. But I know what that feels like. The worry is just so hard to bear. Like, you can never win if you never try, right? There's a 0% chance of winning if you don't try. Okay, let's listen to the tragic music while we talk about what we've uncovered. And look at Iris, for goodness sake! She's gonna have the same eyes... She's having the same eyes you're going to have by the time this trial is over. Oh, all right then! Blimey, give it a rest with your eyes, Iris. <laughs> it's literally her neck. <laughs> what do you want her to do? So come on then, fill us in. Who done it? Uh, unfortunately, we don't know that yet. I'm not, a, I'm not Mr. Shomes, I'm just a lawyer. I don't think there are any lawyers in any Adventures of Sherlock Holmes or Sherlock Holmes stories. <laughs> you don't say. We don't know yet, Gina. But Mr. Nerhodo, and all of us, know that you are innocent of this crime. Besides, I mean, trial three, we got an acquittal without finding the true culprit. So, it's not like I have to find out who did it, it's just, it would be really good if I did. And while we haven't yet managed to work out who the real culprit is, there are a number of interesting facts that we have managed to establish. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, for example, uh, I know how a stereoscope works, I just have to cross my eyes, and then apparently, you know, it's, br it's bloody brilliant, I don't have to pay for a stereoscope anymore. Uh, the, actually, the reason for you being there in the first place. I think I know now why you broke into Windebanks that night. An unfortunate circumstance, it seems. Looks like I'm going to have to take some evidence that clearly reveals the reason. And thrust it in Gina's face! Or I could present it to her calmly, I suppose. Yeah, what is it, a attorney's badge? <laughs> representation in court! We already have the representation papers and other documents we need. All we have to do is hand them to the court clerk, and, well, Susato's going home tomorrow, so, uh, sooner the better. That is, if you'll allow me to represent you in court tomorrow. Please? I really need this gig, okay? I'm, I'm gonna lose my judicial assistant, I will have no one. Although, you know, downsizing my legal agency is probably for the best. Nah, don't bother. Jenny, Rip him up and chuck him, would ya? Them representation papers, or whatever they're called. The cell ain't fancy enough to have a bin. So... What will you do in court tomorrow? Just launch another smoke grenade? It's gonna take you five years to load that contraption. I'll be fine on my own. I don't think you will be. Look, it don't matter. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. This is one stubborn pickpocket. Well, it's time to thrust the evidence in her face. The manuscript. We found this in Mr. Windebank's story. The manuscript of Iris' latest story. Oh. oh, right. Well, I don't care about that. Well, that's good then. Yeah, so what? I've, I've never seen that before in my life. Curiously, the store room at w Windebank's showed no sign of being ransacked for items of value or the like. With one exception. The box file that housed this manuscript. I guess uh, Sholmes wasn't lying after all, it was in there, so that means he's trustworthy. And because I live in the same flat as him, I'm trustworthy too. What do you say? It was you, wasn't it, Gina? You broke open the box containing this manuscript last night. Uh huh? You were determined to find out whether or not the Hound of the Baskervilles was really there. 
That's the real reason you broke into the storeroom last night, isn't it? Ah! Yeah, I didn't even have to dance in this narrow hallway. Why don't you tell us what happened? Please. Iris's manuscript. There you go. Regain your composure. All right, yeah. That's Baskerville's story. It's the latest showman's adventure, right? But I ain't been printed yet. So I figured it's got to be worth a fair few pieces of silver, right? Oh, yeah, sure. You're going to pawn off this intellectual property. That's clearly not by you. Oh, yes, at least 5,000 pounds. What? So, you intended to sell Iris's manuscript, did you? No. Ginny, how could you? I don't think she was performing intellectual property then. What? Wait, no, hang on. Of course I weren't going to sell it. All I wanted to do was find out if the mental script, or whatever you call it, really was there or not. That's the only reason I was in the place. For Iris' sake. Isn't that right? Ugh. We knew why you'd done it from the start, Gina. I'm not- I wasn't born yesterday, okay? You don't have to say happy birthday. Of course we did. But... I knew you wouldn't do anything mean like that, Jenny. I just knew it. Come on, just be wholesome, damn it! Embrace the wholesomeness! Well, um, yeah. When I saw the manuscript in the storeroom, it reminded me of what you'd said the night before. Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Barefaced lawyers, the lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. You wanted to prove yourself right. I'm telling you, that mental script ain't at Windbanks. You'd soon see if you had a look. If I'm honest, I have wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Well, now we know. We never needed to. Oh, Ginny, that was so sweet of you. Yeah. All right, all right. I'll tell you why I did it. Just stop looking at me like that, Iris. Jeez, you call them adults barefaced liars? You're just as bad. Reason for breaking in. It wasn't because of Iris. It's not why I did it. I just wanted to know the truth, that's all. You wanted to know if Mr. Shames was being honest. If he'd really deposited the manuscript at Winterbanks. It's like I told you the night before. I never had a father. But Iris's lot ain't like mine. She's got her dad, but she can't see him. And I reckon that's got to be harder. Oh, Gina. Ah, oh, damn, this music! That's why she writes her stories. They're about her dad, really. That's what it sounded like to me, anyway. Last night, when I was listening to what you were saying. Stories? About Daddy? You mean, they're not the adventures of a great detective? So much as the adventures of a great detective and his trusty partner? Oh, that's so sweet! Oh, damn it! Well, that's how I see it, yeah. Sad music can insinuate anything. You know, like, it can be the... Like, if there was no music playing, it would just be like a mom. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. But now it's just like, oh, God, Iris, I want to give you a hug. You just want to be close to your dad, and we know he's dead because I was there, and I was accused of murdering him, damn it. You're so thoughtful and so kind, Ginny. Yes, and we never thought any differently, did we? Look, <laughs> give her a rest, will you? I hate all this chummy nonsense, do you hear? I hate it. I don't trust no one, right? That's how I work. Because if you don't trust no one, no one can let you down. So leave me alone. Go on, scarper. Uh, I know that feeling. What's that on your wrists there? Is Rinosuke seeing what I'm seeing? I hadn't noticed until now, but it's unmistakable. Right there on both sleeves of that overcoat. Are some very suspicious red stains. Gina, I'm gonna need to spray you with smoke. What? Why are you looking at me like that? I think it might be worth presenting some of our other findings in that area to, Ginny, to Gina now. I almost called her Ginny. I'm not Iris. Those stains on the sleeves are your new coat, Gina. They're blood, aren't they? 
Not that I know who's blood yet. What? B blood Mr. Nohede. You don't appear to have any obvious wounds yourself, though, and I don't think they serve ketchup here in this jail. So could it be blood that's splattered from Mr. Winderbank when he was shot last night? Some beat around the bush here. This trusty friend of mine will get results much faster than anything else. Is it going to be blue blood? Uh, take it easy, Iris. You're the one who always aiming that gun at me, okay? It's about time you got a taste of your own medicine. Literally. Poof. Don't move, Ginny. I'm going to shoot. <laughs> Normally you say, don't move or I'll shoot. Well, what do we have? Oh, damn, it's all over her. And it's purple. Oh. Oh, my. What the? Forget the sleeves. The whole coat is covered in blood. Of course. The black color of the fabric was masking the stains. That's why we haven't seen them until now. Whoa. And the blood has reacted with the chemical to turn a purple color. Which matches one of the samples we've already collected perfectly. Yes, now let's see. Who had the purple blood? Aha, yes, it was the brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The victim of the murder case two months ago. Indeed it was. I knew it. What? What are you all on about? The victim? What do you mean? It's a rather uncomfortable situation, Mr. Narahodo, but I think this makes things quite clear. It means the Omnibus case is finally solved. The truth about who really murdered the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, is revealed. Uh-huh. Whose code does this belong to? Mr. McGilded. Oi! Will someone explain what's going on? Stop telling off a story! <laughs> oh dear. What does this all mean? The truth of the Omnibus case. You can see now that the victim's blood is all over Mr. McGilded's overcoat. But in the trial two months ago, the defendant said this in his testimony. <laughs> of course she wrote it down. Now I ask is, what good-hearted soul wouldn't rush to help a fellow bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about me gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. Hmm. But if you look at this overcoat now, it's clear. He gave him more than his hand. He rubbed his chest all over him. These stains couldn't have arisen from McGill trying to pull the victim to his feet. No, if that was what would really happened, the blood wouldn't have splashed all over the front of the coat. The only explanation for this pattern of blood is that he stabbed him. Is that it splattered over McGilded's coat when he stabbed the victim in the stomach. I've tried to run from the truth for long enough. But there's no escaping it now. The true culprit in that case, Mr. Mason's killer, was Magnus McGilded. And he laughs in his flashback appearance. How dare he? Mr. Narodo. That horrible case is solved at last. Although, it'll look bad on me. I got him a not guilty verdict. <laughs> we should probably keep this under wraps, guys. Okay? Nothing leaves this cell. And I... I helped the man walk free from that trial. I used all that twisted testimony and all that sham evidence to prove his innocence. How could I have let that happen? Someone please tell me it's not my fault. Bruno, did you believe him there? Did you believe Mr. McGillard was innocent? Yeah, until about halfway through the trial. I believed. Or rather, I think I was trying to believe. I, I wanted to. Because believing in those you represent in court is the defense lawyer's greatest weapon. And I wanted to be armed to the fucking teeth. A weapon? A lawyer's weapon. Before we came to Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson. You mean Kazuma-sama? Oh, it's been a while since I've seen him. Listen, Ryanosuke, we lawyers are only human. We can't know for sure what is the truth and what is a lie. Which is why we must resort to our primary weapon. An unwavering belief in our clients. That's all we really have. Unwavering belief? 
Only when we truly believe what our clients tell us can we fight with everything we have for that cause. In any battle, there can be no victory without faith. So I believe you, unwaveringly. <laughs> What's funny, Gina? <laughs> Sounds like in this Empire of Japan you come from. Everyone must be soft. <laughs> he was anything but, okay? He carried a katana. He was hard, okay? He was a hard man. Oh, come on. Look at the mess it's got you into, believing on that bog trotter. Yes, I inadvertently helped the murderer walk free into a furnace. I guess. So there's some reprieve there. Although I don't even know if he's dead. Well, at least you've learned your lesson now, eh? Believing in people's never worth it. Someone's always stabs someone always stabs you in the back in the end. As soon as you let down your guard, you've had it. Yeah, well, Susato took me down from behind earlier this afternoon. You're quite right, Gina. I don't trust any of you. Take a leaf out of my book. Believe no one. Get hurt by no one. Yeah, but then... Helped by no one, you know? <laughs> Gina, may I ask you something? What? I'd just like to make absolutely sure. What would you like us to do with this, these representation papers for tomorrow's trial? How many times do I have to say it? Rip them up and chuck them away. Are you really sure that's what you want? I bet that's what he wants on and all now. Mr. I'm a believer lawyer over there. <laughs> Don't you just slander me, okay? I'm trying to help you. Don't forget it was me in that trial two months ago. I led everyone up the garden path, didn't I? And you're telling me you can believe in me after that? Not likely. Oh, Mr. Nahode. A lawyer's primary weapon is an unwavering belief in this client. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not I feel I can trust Gina after everything that's happened. I trust her. I have to. I need a weapon. Gina, let me say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. Huh? Are you off-baked? Not at all. I'm not high, I promise. You've not once admitted to committing the crime, have you? You're just saying that that's what they're all saying, okay? And what I'm saying is that what you're saying is not correct. What's more, I believe that you're telling me the truth. My theme's playing. You gotta accept now. Seriously? Um, Mr. Naro Odo? Didn't you hear all of what I said before? I'm a born liar. Fibs just will trip off my tongue. And I'm a diver, don't forget. I pulled the wool over your eyes two months ago. It got you into all sorts of trouble. So you're saying I can't forgive you? That's my decision, not yours. Why would you ever trust me now? I just don't get it, because I can see you've got a good heart in you. You try to console Iris by breaking into Mr. Winterbacks to see if Sherlock Holmes was lying about uh, whether he deposited the manuscript in there or not, okay? You confessed to lying two months ago because you obviously had a conscience. Gina. I do understand why you chose not to put your trust in others. But I assure you, there's more to this life than you yet realize. What do you mean? You're only like three years older than me. <laughs> How would you know? The world we live in. It's full of people you would do very well to trust. People who won't ever let you down. Wait, let me just double check their age. Uh... Oh, never mind. She's older than Susato. <laughs> oh, great. And we're giving her life lessons. Huh? It's true that I'm just a student of law, and I'm certainly lacking in courtroom experience. But I can promise you this. I'll try my best. Whatever happens, and until my very last breath, I'm completely on your side. Let's just hope the Reaper doesn't kill me. Because my last breath will be coming up really quick. Well, Gina. What? What did you expect me to say to that? Oh, she's tearing up. Then it's decided. I'll take these papers now and carry out the necessary preparations for tomorrow's trial. Yeah, we forced you. 
be a shame to throw them away now after it's been pinned with your name so beautifully. So do what you like. You Eastern lot are... Oh. Oh. oh, I don't know what you are. I don't get you. <laughs> it's okay, Gina. I don't understand myself half the time either. Gina's taking herself off to the back of her cell. She'd never admit it, but I hope she's feeling relieved. That turned out alright in the end. I think. That's a lot of dots, Ryanosuke. What are we thinking? Whoever's hiding there? Show yourself at once! Eavesdropping is the height of cowardice! Mr. Sato, please don't take me down! Somebody's there in the shadows. I can sense it. Somebody who wasn't there before. What? Who? Blimey, you're sharp, eh? Gregson. Here to tell us about Shomes? Suppose you were using one of them mystic Japanese arts. Like the art of stealth I've heard so much about. <laughs> you shouldn't have heard about ninjas. It's supposed to be a stealthy secret. If anyone was being stealthy, it was you, Inspector. Was this a noir film? Rexy. Oh dear me, I'm most terribly sorry, your ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you. Please don't write about me slunk skulking in the shadows in your latest edition. How long have you been listening in on my conversation? Good grief, I listened in? No, no, no. I just got word that there were some visitors who were refusing to leave even though it was after hours. I assure you, your ladyship, I only just arrived this, this very minute, not a moment earlier. That's all it is, nothing untoward, nothing at all. After hours? Is that late already? So then, I'll humbly excuse myself now, your ladyship. Ta-ta, toodaloo, cheerio, all the best, bye bye and bye. <laughs> That's a lot of farewells, and not one of them appropriate for her ladyship. <laughs> hey, but I wanted to have a chat. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but time is present at the minute. Oh, I see. That's a shame. If I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court dealt with sharpish, Lord Strongheart will... Well... Emergency? Lord Strongheart? Nothing! Forget I said anything! Anyway, <laughs> I'm off! Alright, Grixie. If you have to. But let's chat soon. Delighted. Charmed. Can't wait. If you please, my pleasure. Where'd that teacup come from? She didn't pour you any. That's a lot of pleasantries, and not one of them sounded sincere. <laughs> Grexy's so funny. He says such silly things. It's certainly entertaining to see an inspector of the police fawning to a ten-year-old girl. <laughs> and kind of concerning. But anyway, I wonder what this emergency is at the Supreme Court. Hmm. Must attend the court clerk's office now before it closes. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Sato. I'll, uh, catch you later. Can I escort Iris home now, Mr. Nerohudo? I shall meet you there later. And so our investigation came to an end. susato san went to file the necessary papers for my defense of Gina the following day. And then it hit me. I could no longer suppress the wretched feeling that had been gnawing away at my insides. Tomorrow. susato san would be leaving. Leaving Britain and making her way back to Japan. Oh man. It's gonna be so lonely. I'll miss her. Something's gotta intervene, please. A miracle cure for her father, hopefully. 16th of April, 11.13 p.m. Naruto's legal consultancy. Naruto-san. It's been a very trying day, hasn't it? I do hope you're not too exhausted. What about you, Susato-san? Today has been even more trying for you, I'm sure. It takes a lot of effort to flip me over, you know. Mr. Shones was shot before our eyes. Gina was arrested. All on the back of the news that her father has fallen ill and that she must return to Japan at once. I... hope your father recovers soon. Thank you for your kind words. I wonder why it is. That so many thoughts rage in my head like a storm. And yet, I seem unable to find the words to express any of them. I know exactly what you mean. Anyway, I have one final task to complete as your judicial assistant. Yeah, to tell me how the hell you know about the Hound of the Baskervilles. Once that is done, I shall make preparations for my departure tomorrow. One final task. 
what is your final task? We can still move around. Oh, they're all greyed out, it seems. Cool. Never mind. Might as well block the <laughs> entire thing, then. Can we go anywhere else? Nope. Okay. Let's converse. Going back to Japan. It's just two months since we arrived in London. But we've managed to establish this office. I was finally feeling as though we were settling in. Yeah, well, we haven't gotten much work come through, so... <laughs> At least we did the foundation. I would be lying if I said I felt no regret. I'm so sorry, Susato-san. It's just so sudden. I really don't know what to think. I've had no time to gather my thoughts. I know we've only been here a short time, but... In my limited experience of the courtroom, I feel I've learned something. And what would that be? I can't do anything without you. It seems to me... There are many facets to people's personalities. Facets? Like a jewel, the light plays off them in complex patterns, illuminating their actions and their motives. But we see only a small number of the total facets, and what is illuminated is only a part of the whole story. It's very, very deep, Naruto. We are clearly tired <laughs> and exhausted. What lies in the shadows? What do those facets we cannot see look like? Perhaps there are some parts we'll never lay eyes on, for as long as we live. Normally this is the kind of thing like he'd say at the end of a case or end of an investigation, you know, in his little uh, inner monologue, but now I'm sharing it with Susato. That's so true. Sometimes I feel as though I'm blind to so much. But I keep hoping that one day it will all become clear. That all the facets will be illuminated. And I'll finally understand how everything fits together. Now heard it, son. I didn't understand a word you just said. <laughs> I suppose what matters is that we keep our eyes open and keep moving forward, even if the way sometimes seems dark. It's amazing to think it's been just two months. You've grown so much. Oh, sorry? Of, of, of what? <laughs> oh no, it was nothing. Unimportant. Tomorrow's departure. You know what time you'll be? You'll leave London in the morning? Yes. I picked up my ticket earlier. I should be leaving here at 4 a.m. Wait, what? In, in five hours' time? You haven't packed? I see. Well, I'll escort you to the station. Absolutely not. Sorry. I'm sure you realize why I couldn't possibly let you do that. You have a very important day ahead of you tomorrow. Gina's trial. I know, but, you know, I need to say goodbye to you properly. Yes, I know, but... Every word you utter will have the potential to determine Gina's fate. You must get as much rest as possible. Even though, like me, I'm sure you will find it hard to sleep. But please, for me, do try. <sighs> it's like sleeping before an exam, you know? Like, I never could. Or my first day at work. I, it's, I, I was too anxious. One final task. Um, you mentioned one final task a moment ago. What did you mean? It's not sleep, is it? Oh my, I nearly forgot. What, really? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I I entranced her with my deep uh, explanation of life. Please, I want you to have this. What is that? Some huge bundle of documents? It's not your blue book. It's your burgundy book. It's my notes. From the case two months ago. The murder that was committed on the omnibus. Huh? The McGilded case. She made a lot of notes. It seems to me that this case of Mr. Winterbank's murder, of which Gina is accused, is very much tied up with that omnibus case, in ways that are not yet completely apparent. So I took the liberty of consolidating my writings about the case for you. When the hell did you do this? With everything else she's had to think about? Susato-san still managed to do this? And all neatly laid out for me in her beautiful handwriting? Holy fuck, I'm gonna miss you so bad. I need a hug. No one's... Oh, God, like... The work ethic is just incredible. It was my pleasure. You know, taking pride in one's work is an admirable trait, especially when they're such a hard-working person, you know? I can only hope that it will bolster your case tomorrow for Gina. Thank you so much, Susato-san. I'll do my best to use it wisely. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. 
Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say that I've been a complete failure. Sorry. Uh, I, I didn't quite, quite just say that. You, you said failure? What? You're, you're kidding, right? I, ignore me. I was just mumbling to myself. Of course you were. The McKilded case notes have been entered into the court record. Notes collated by Miss Susato about the McKilded case that we worked on two months ago. Do we have a chance to read it right now, do we? Well, it's getting rather late. Yeah, we do. So, a quick look. Case summary. Victim found deceased on the last scheduled omnibus of the day after a stab wound to the abdomen. Details of the victim was Mason Milverton, male. He was a brickmaker. He was from the East End of London. Trial summary. Defendant Magnus McGilded. Prosecution attorney Lord Barack Van Zeeks. Defense attorney Rinosuke Narhoto. Conviction was assured with three eyewitness testimonies. However, a surprise fourth witness's testimony resulted in acquittal due to insufficient evidence. A witness that lied on the stand. Hmm. I think you should go to bed now, Narhoto-san. I must finish packing up my things in my room. Susato-san, I... I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. Good night. Wait! There's... There's something I need to say! Hiya! What? No! <laughs> How am I supposed to sleep now? What was that? A secret technique of mine. The Susato shutdown! <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's she's ending task for me. Shut down. Oh, come on. You didn't need to control out delete me. Please, I implore you. If we have to voice our goodbyes, I won't be able to hold back my tears. Wait. I'm not done! I need you! Susato, come back! I need you! Susato, son. Oh, God. I'm just gonna sleep here. It truly had been a trying day. On our feet for hours, getting Gina to open up to us, and learning the truth about that nemesis of a case. Physically and mentally. I was exhausted, and yet the idea of sleep seemed impossible, but I forced myself to close my eyes, and as a cacophony of scenes of our lives here in London played through my mind, eventually my fatigue triumphed, and I fell into a deep sleep. There we go, that's, that's Rianosuke going to sleep, a lot of dots that are now silent. Are we going to get interrupted? Oh. We're not quite at the end yet. 17th of April, the small hours. St. Sinner's Hospital, Ward 3. Yes, I quite understand. Who is this? That is a great weight off my mind. It's a female talking, and a male. Sherms. Rest assured, I shall put everything in place, exactly as we have discussed. Thank you so much. It has been an honour and a pleasure to be acquainted with you, Mr. Sherms. Of course, he's talking with Susato. He has to be. On the contrary, the pleasure has been mine. I bid you farewell, and Godspeed. Yep. My dear madam. Hmm. Well, he's standing up all right. To be continued. What were these two up to? Why am I left out of everything? 